Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christy, aka That Spanish Teacher, and I'm back with another tutorial to make your life easier because you should be working smarter, not harder. Today's tutorial is going to help you to make quick and easy study guides for your students to cover any of your 504 IEPs and just make your students life easier as well as your own. So this would be really helpful for you if you have already watched my uh, video on how to make Google Form Assessments. If you haven't already watched that, please go ahead and check out that video now. It is also super helpful if you're a language teacher to check out my video on how to make assessments using Google Form to get around the Google Translate um, loophole. So if you've already watched those, we can start now. And you're going to make this study guide using any of your other Google Forms that you have created anyways. So that can be a um, exit ticket, an entrance ticket, an assessment, a homework, whatever you have made already. This is going to be compiled all together to make a study guide and make your life easier. So the first thing obviously you want to do is you want to just name your study guide. So I'm going to say study guide. And then we're going to do the topic that we're working on right now, which is mandatos informales. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the question that I have right here because I don't need it. And I'm going to go over to our little toolbar on the right hand side and I'm going to click this button that says import questions. So when you do that, it's going to immediately bring you to see all of your Google Forms that you have in your drive. So you can go ahead and search for the ones you're looking for. So I'm going to put in mandatos informales so I can find the ones that I need for this set. And if I scroll down, I can find the homeworks that I have already created for my students in order to help them master the informal commands. So if I go ahead and I click on that, you'll see on the right hand side, a toolbar pops up that allows you to see what is in the Google form that you have just created. So, so it shows the title at the top, and then it shows all of the questions that you have put in there and what type of questions they are. So you can see that all of mine, there's 10 questions and they are all short answer, which is how I format all of my homeworks for my students. So once I've previewed this information, if I would like to, I can check off individual ones that I would like to import into the study guide. Or if I decide that I like all of them, I'm going to click select all and I'm going to click import questions. And now just like that, I have taken all of the questions that are in that homework that I already created, already has the answer key created and everything like that is already acquired, has the point system all made up, ready to go. And I have put it right into this study guide. You can also, if you decide to, put this into sections. So say this is for a unit test and you have multiple sections on that unit test for different topics that you have covered. If you would like, you can click add section below your last question and you can change the topic so that students know when they're moving to the study guide that they're moving on to a different topic of the unit that you can um, make sure that they know they're covering. We don't need to do that right now because this is all study guide for one topic. So I'm going to go ahead and now that I'm good with this section, I'm going to go ahead and click import questions again. I'm going to find another one that I have done. I'm going to click select again. This one's from my irregulars. I'm going to do select all and you can do that again and again with as many questions as you would like. This is really, really, really helpful because when your students go to review for the information for the exam, you have all the questions that you have made personally that are tailored to their learning style and what you want for their exam and what's going to prepare them best. And not only that, but better than a regular study guide, this grades itself. So when your students are completing the study guide, they're going to be able to see in live time whether they got the questions right or wrong. This is super helpful for students because I find that often students, when they're doing a study guide, write the answers in, they see a, um, the answer key post on Google Classroom or whatever. And when they see that they got the answer wrong, they see the correct answer on the answer key and go, oh yeah, I knew that. And they convince themselves that they knew the correct answer. However, when it comes test time, they make the exact same mistake all over again. We don't want that. And that's a huge issue for me as a teacher, which is also why I do Google Form homework, because that ensures that students are earning their grade and they're also doing the homework and the uh, Google form or study guide or whatever as many times as they need until they can be sure that they have found and learned the correct information to get the right answer. This also inspires students to have that responsibility to go and use their resources, look up notes, etc., and all these different things to help them better understand the material. There are also other things that you can do to help make your study guide more efficient and add more information. For example, if I wanted to, I could make this a um, multiple choice exam. And if I make it a multiple choice exam, so let's add a question in and we're going to do, let's do the same question as above, except we'll do affirmative DAR. Okay. So now I want to do and make this into a multiple choice question. So I can do day da 
or Goss and Dace. Okay, so some of these are right. Some I mean, well, some of them are right formations, but some of them they're all obviously wrong except for one. So when I go to the answer key, I can choose the correct answer, which is Da. And what I can do is I can come down to these three little dots in the right hand corner and I can click go to section based off of answer. So if you would like, you can make it so that students go to different sections based off of their incorrect answers or their correct answer. So this is really nice because say for example, I realize that if students are choosing days, um, they may not be realizing that that's the negative form. So what I can do is I can create a section that has review And I can include a YouTube video of Senor Jordan reviewing this exact information. So I can go and search in YouTube and I can say affirmative two commands, negative two commands, here's what I want. And so now I can import that video and I can have students go to this section. So that way I know that they can review the information, they can rewatch this video. And then once they're good with that, they can go back to the section that they were just on and try again. So this is really helpful because you could really scaffold your study guides to make sure that they're tailored to your student learning. You can also make it so that when you have something like this, if you click the three dots, you can do response validation. Response validation means that students cannot move on to the following section or question until they get that right. So if you, for example, wanted them to not be able to move on to um, irregular commands until they had already mastered regular commands, you can make it so that they cannot move on until they have completed the section correctly to 100%. Then once they do, it unlocks the following section. You may have seen this done by other teachers when they do escape the room activities in study guide form or through Google Forms like this. All of these things can be really effective and can help you to better tailor your learning for your students and can really, again, make sure they are being responsible for their own learning and making sure they totally understand the information. When you're doing a study guide and you want it to be in this format so students can totally understand before they are turning it in, just make sure to always to edit after submit. And I like to do limit one response. You can even do for a study guide, see summary chart and text responses that allows them to see what other students are doing. It can also be helpful to shuffle the question order or show a progress bar if it's a long one. Um, and obviously as a quiz, you wanna be able to make sure for them to see it that they see their missed questions immediately as soon as they submit it and not the correct answer. So that way when they go to submit the quiz, they can see what they got wrong, but they don't see what the correct answer is. And they have the edit after submit option so they can go in again and again and again as many times as they would like until they get the score that they would like to receive. You can also go ahead afterwards, save the day before the exam, you can go in and you can change it so that now it releases the correct answers. So when you click save, students go back into the same study guide form. And when they go and submit their answers again, they will see not only what they got wrong, but what the correct answers are. So that way they can do that final last check before the exam. I hope that answered any of your questions and was a quick and easy tutorial for you on how to make study guides via Google Forms. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, but please make sure to subscribe and follow me on, on my other social media platforms. Thanks.